Hello friends, welcome to episode number 11 of Pot to Pickle, a series of Grow Along Back to Basics video tutorials for the novice urban vegetable grower, where we are growing everything together this year and we are growing everything in pots. Now that all of our veg has been properly hardened off and the summer and the warmer nights have finally arrived, it is time to plant out all of our veg into their final big pots and to leave them outside permanently where they will stay for the rest of the season. If your plants are getting really quite big and you might find that they put on growth spurts now that the weather has warmed up, you really don't want to delay this process. You want to get them into their final pots as soon as possible because if they stay in containers that they've outgrown or that they're soon to outgrow, it really affects their performance and the abundance of harvest that you will get. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to pot up the different types of veg and provide supports for them. I'm going to show you how to mulch and also cover a little bit about pest defences. I'm going to show you how to care for these plants throughout the season, which includes watering, feeding and tying in. I'm going to show you how to pinch out the side shoots of vine tomatoes and I'm going to talk about how and when to harvest your veg. A key point to remember with all of your potted up veg is that their final positions need to be in direct sun which means they need a minimum of six hours of direct sunlight every day at peak summer, so at sort of summer solstice, end of June time. Six hours is the minimum, I, ideally more is better. If they get any less than six hours, you will get some fruit, but you really won't get as much as the plants could give you. So do cram them into the sunniest corner of your outside space. Okay, there is a lot to get through in this episode, so let's get cracking. How to plant up summer squash, aubergines, chilies, peppers and bush or dwarf tomatoes. Now remember summer squash are things like courgettes and patty pans. Now for all of these veg they each need their own individual pot per plant so you wouldn't put two chilies in one pot for example. As for aubergines and the summer squash these can get quite big as plants and so I use pots that are around 35 to 40 centimetres in diameter with a good amount of depth. You can put them in smaller pots but if you do what will happen is you'll just end up with smaller fruit and also possibly less fruit. With chilies, peppers and dwarf or bush tomatoes which generally have cherry tomatoes on them you can use smaller pots for those as they're generally smaller plants. So a pot diameter of around 25 to 30 centimetres will be suitable for those. Okay, here I am planting up one of my aubergines and you can see the pot size is around 35 centimetres in diameter. Now, when you're planting up any plant in any pot, for your outside space, you always follow the same initial method. The first thing you do is you cover the drainage holes with what are called crocs. And crocs are just basically broken pieces of old plant pots or something, something that's curved. Uh, plastic food packaging also works well for this. Um, that prevents the soil from falling through the holes and blocking, blocking the drainage. So that's the first thing that you do. Then you take your multi-purpose peat-free compost and you fill it up. Breaking up any sort of big clumps as you go and gently firming it down as you go as well. Then when you've got about the depth left that is the same as the plant that you're potting up, you then put that plant in the middle, still in its pot, 
and continue to fill around the pot. When you're almost near the top, firm the compost down, take this pot out and you would have made a hole that is the perfect size to put this plant in. So at this point, you gently turn the pot upside down, tease the plant out, pop it in the hole. Firm it in, and now I'm gonna continue adding compost until I'm about an inch from the from the rim. Now in terms of supports, all of these veg grow quite bushy, so they don't need much, but what I do tend to do is put a short cane in these pots. It's only like a couple to about three feet tall um, to provide some support that I can loosely tie the plant into as it grows because once they do get fruit they, they do sort of flop over and get a bit top heavy. Then what you want to do is you want to put your pot in its final position and you want to raise it up on pot feet which are these sort of things. And it just lifts them off the ground a bit and the purpose of this is it allows for better drainage so the water excess water can actually drain away and it also stops ants creating nests under your pots you don't have to buy pot feet you can use anything really i've used sort of old bits of broken paving slabs or bricks just something that will raise them up a little bit so once your pot is in its final position and it's raised up on feet you want to completely soak all of the compost in the pot. What I do is I add a little water at a time, give the compost a chance to actually absorb it, then add more and keep going until water starts to come out of the bottom of the pots. So that's when you know all the soil's been fully saturated. Now you want to repeat this exact method for all of your aubergines, your summer squash, so things like your courgettes or your patty pans your chilies and your peppers. How to plant up cucumbers. Now I found that with cucumbers, you can have more than one plant in a large pot that also has a good amount of depth. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to plant three cucumbers in a large pot. If your pot doesn't hold quite as much volume as mine, then you can just do two or you can even do one cucumber. Now cucumbers are vines, meaning they grow tall and they need something to climb up. If you are planting two or just one cucumber in a pot, you can create a support for them to climb by getting three eight foot long bamboo canes, sticking them in the pot in a triangle, um, connecting them at the top, tying them together, so you've got like a bamboo wigwam, and then um, spiralling a string around the outside and the cucumbers can climb up that. If you'd like to do that, there is a detailed step-by-step -step process on how to do it in episode number eight called How to Sow and Grow Climbing Peas or Beans up a bamboo wigwam. If you skip to five minutes 53, that is when I start showing you the process. And you basically follow the instructions, but do it with just three canes instead of the seven that I use in that video. If you are planning to grow three cucumbers in one large pot, I would suggest a support that is square at the top rather than one that tapers to a point because the leaves of cucumbers can get quite, quite big. And if you've got three cucumbers growing in a pot, all leading to the same point, it can get quite congested at the top of that support, which can lead to problems such as fungal disease. So you wanna look for a support that kind of just goes straight up and then flat on the top. 
something like a metal obelisk would work really well for that and that is actually what I'm going to use for my pot of cucumbers. Okay so here is my cucumber pot and the diameter of this is 39 centimetres but it's quite a deep pot as well so it's about 34 centimetres deep and I've done exactly the same thing so I've covered the drainage holes with crocs, filled it up with compost, firming, gently firming as I go. I've put the three cucumbers in place and you want to put them close to the edge and obviously in a triangle so that they're furthest apart from each other. And then I do the same thing as before. Ease them out of their pots, pop them in the hole. Don't forget the label. And I'm going to add a little bit more compost to this. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using an obelisk for this. And here it is. Now, this is a not particularly great quality one. It was only 750 from Wilco, but it's going to do the exact job that I need. And it's actually too big to go inside my pot, but actually fits perfectly on the outside. And that is absolutely fine. And then what I will do is I will train these cucumbers up to spiral around the obelisk on the outside and I will do that by frequently tying them in to the obelisk so what I do is I do an, a knot around the support and then a loose knot around the plant and I'm gonna make it spiral sort of spiral Rather than each plant growing straight up, I'm going to make, I'm going to train them to spiral round, which means that they will be able to grow even taller whilst not exceeding the height of the obelisk. And I'll just show you now what the obelisk looks like. So it's pretty tall and this will be absolutely sufficient to support these three cucumber plants. Now it is important to regularly tie the new growth in. You've got to stay on top of it otherwise it will start growing in all different ways and it will be harder for you to bring it back to the direction that you want. Put this in your final position, give it a good thorough water. How to pot up cordon or vine tomatoes and create their supports. They follow the same process, but they're a little bit more involved. Firstly, I've done the same initial steps. I've covered the drainage holes with crocs, but this time I've added just a tiny bit of compost just to create a level on which to place the pot. Now I'm actually going to plant out the tomato this deep and what will happen is most of the stem will actually be buried below the surface because cordon or vine tomatoes absolutely love being buried deep. What happens is we snap off any leaves that would be below the soil level and new roots grow from the buried part of the stem which allows the tomato to absorb more nutrients and water and it grows really strong. It's also really good because it anchors the plant well too. Now you only do this with your vine or your cordon tomatoes. You do not do this with bush or dwarf type tomatoes. So I put that in. I'm going to fill the surrounding with compost. Okay, I've brought this compost level up to that of the pot. Take it out, there's my hole to put it in. Turn this beautiful tomato upside down carefully, because it's quite poor now. Pop it in. 
now I continue adding compost until once again I'm about an inch off of the rim and any leaves that will be under the stem I'll snap off. That is now buried nice and deep and now I need to create some support for the tomato to be trained up against and this is going to be up a piece of string that is connected to a three cane bamboo wigwam let me show you how to do this okay so what i've done is i've taken three bamboo canes each eight foot long and i've pushed them into a triangle formation right on the edge of the pot and then at the top I have um, connected them together and I've used a bit of duct tape. So here's my very simple three cane bamboo pyramid. That's the first step. Okay, then what we do is we take a roll of twine and we loosely tie one end around the base of the tomato plant. You want to tie it loosely because the stem will get thicker and then we lead this up and tie it around the top of the bamboo pyramid. You feed the string right up to the top and you tie it in a knot around the top of your bamboo cane so that the string is nice and tall. Then what you continue to do regularly is you weave the leading stem of your tomato plant around the string as it grows. And so it will kind of grow um, spiraling up that string, which will make it dead straight. And so that's it. Here you've got a very sturdy support for your tomatoes and it's nice and isolated individually to each pot, which means you can still move the pots around if you need to. The key thing is you must wrap this around the string regularly. Put this in its final position, raise it up on some sort of pot feet, give it a good soak. How to pinch out tomato side shoots. Okay, one thing you must do with your vine tomatoes is you must regularly pinch out the side shoots. So when it comes to vine or cordon tomatoes, they're also known as, we want one single main leading stem. But what happens is wherever there is a leaf branch, such as here, at the axle between the main stem and the leaf branch, a side shoot will always try to grow and you can see it grows at 45 degrees. These are the things you need to remove whenever you see them and you literally pinch them out, just break them off. So we will only ever have one leading stem. You can see here another side shoot is starting to grow at the axle between the leaf and the main stem. I'm going to get rid of that too. So do get rid of those as you see them. If you don't, what happens is the plant puts all its energy into creating these side shoots and these leaves and very little energy into creating the flowers which will then produce fruits. So in order to get the maximum amount of fruit from your vine tomato, you do want only one single leading stem which means you want to remove any side shoots that appear at those axles between the main stem and the leaf. How to mulch your veg pots. Okay, once all of your veg plants are potted up in their final positions and they have been watered, one thing you I really recommend you do is you mulch the soil surface of all of the pots. And mulch is just a word given to any material used 
to cover bare soil, whether it's organic, meaning that it will eventually um, decompose and break down into the soil, or whether it's not organic, such as plastic. Now, I find if you take your empty compost bag, cut out a circle, these work really well as mulches. Cut out a little circle and you can put it as a collar around your veg plant and just keep it in place with a stone. So that works really well and a nice way to reuse the plastic lining. I also find that sheep's wool from um, insulation you get often in food packaging works really well. Break it into pieces, put it around your plant. Just make sure you keep a little bit of space away from the stem just to make sure it doesn't rot the stem if it gets wet. That works really well too. And the purpose of a mulch is really to minimise the amount of water that evaporates from the soil surface. Because let me tell you, when it's the height of summer, if the sun is beating down on bare soil, it will dry out in an instant. And watering is one of the most time intensive tasks of growing veg. Um, because they need to be watered daily in the height of summer and anything that can reduce the amount of watering you have to do and the amount of water that you use you will be really grateful for later on in the season so do ensure that you mulch and obviously if you're using something that is not um, permeable such as plastic make sure you remove it before you water the plant and then put the mulch back once you've watered. Defence against slugs and snails. Okay, firstly, if you are growing in a high up space, such as on a balcony or on a roof terrace, you are likely going to have very little to no problems with slugs and snails, which is brilliant. Also, some outside spaces just don't seem to have that many slugs and snails. For example, my parents' garden just doesn't seem to get many slugs or snails. If you think your outside space does have a lot of slugs and snails, mine has tons, then it is very worthwhile um, preemptively setting up some lines of defence to protect your veg. In my experience, slugs and snails seem to adore peas and beans. They have a taste for aubergines, but not too much. They hardly ever touch my tomatoes and they didn't touch my cucumbers last year at all either. So slugs and snails do have a taste for certain veg over others. So it's worth bearing that in mind. And by this time, a lot of your veg, such as your chilies, peppers, aubergines, tomatoes, will probably be quite substantially large and their stems will be getting quite tough and woody, which is perfect because slugs and snails don't like woody stems um, and they'll leave those alone. They might still climb to the top to nibble on the new fresh growth, but generally they don't cause that much damage. For your younger plants, so the ones you sowed later more recently such as the cucurbits they might not yet be big and tough enough to deter the slugs and so may need some extra protection but either way what I tend to do is around every pot except my tomatoes I don't bother with those because the slugs and snails really don't touch them in my garden around every pot I wrap a wide piece of copper tape a few inches below the rim to help deter slugs and snails because when they cross copper they feel a very slight electric charge which is enough to deter a lot of them. Some of them are very intrepid and will cross that copper tape anyway but I really do feel like it helps with the majority of the slugs and snails. I bought the tape off of Amazon um, and I would suggest you buy the wide tape because the narrow tape, actually, I don't think it's wide enough to properly deter them. So do get the wide tape.
There are really all sorts of suggestions to deter slugs and snails. If you have a quick Google online, you'll find loads of them. I would say go for the natural, environmentally friendly ones. Please don't use slug pellets because it's basically poison and you're adding poison to your garden, which will be detrimental to all of the wildlife in your garden. Um, it's very much a case of trial and error. Try different things, see what works in your garden, but the more prongs to your defence, the more successful you will be at deterring the little critters. How to care for your veg for the rest of the season. The climbing vines, such as the cucumbers and the tomatoes, need regular tying in or winding around their supports. And the vine tomatoes need regular pinching out of those side shoots. But other than that, the only things you need to do to look after your veg for the rest of the growing season is to feed and water them regularly. All of these veg plants need a tomato feed, which encourages lots of flowers and therefore more fruit. And you can use any tomato feed and you can use that feed for all of your flowering plants. Now, with a veg plant, when you notice the first fruits set on it, that is the point at which you start feeding it. So when you first spot the first, uh, the, the small green chilies, or when you first spot a load of small green tomatoes, or when you first spot the tiniest aubergine, that's when you start feeding your plants. And you do so by just following the instructions on the bottle, which usually works out at feeding them once every 10 days or so. It is important that you do feed your veg, so don't skip this, otherwise you're just gonna end up with less harvest. Note, tomato feed only works for vegetables that flower and then set to fruit. It doesn't work for other vegetables such as root veg or brassicas or salad leaves, for example. Those would need a totally different kind of feed. Watering is the thing that you will do most regularly for the rest of the season. And if we're experiencing a heat wave, which is more and more common these days, such as, you know, late 20s, 30 degrees, you'll probably need to water twice a day. If a heat wave is predicted, I water my pots in the morning and also in the evening. After a really hot day, you will see the plants suffering because actually they often start to wilt a little bit, especially at their end, at the tips of the plants. General points to note, avoid watering in the middle of the day when it's at its hottest because the water will just evaporate too quickly and there's potential of scorching the leaves if any water gets on the foliage. You always want to direct the water to the roots, to the soil. Avoid getting water on the foliage as this can cause fungal disease. And remember, if the mulch that you've used is impenetrable, such as a plastic sheet, Remove that first water and then put the mulch back. For most of the season, when the plants are mature and they've really got a lot of fruit on them, they basically need watering every day. What I do is I'll pour some water in, wait a few seconds to give the compost a chance to actually absorb it, pour some more in and keep repeating that process until water starts to drain out of the bottom of the pot. What's key is consistent watering. So water regularly rather than going for days without watering and then giving it loads of water. You want it to keep the watering consistent because if you don't, that can result in a few problems. One of them is called blossom end rot where the tomatoes kind of just rot on the vine. Key thing to note, even if it rains, it's likely not sufficient enough to have properly watered your veg plants because to give your veg a proper drink, they need water directed to their roots and a lot of it. The rain we get in summer is never enough. Unless it's torrential rain that's coming down heavy for hours that has properly soaked through the soil, you will likely still need to water your plants even if it has rained. How and when to harvest. The bit we've all been working towards, 
where all your hard work comes to fruition. Harvesting your first veg is always a big day of every year. But interestingly, harvesting is the thing that people often don't do regularly enough. The key thing about harvesting is you must do it regularly, even if you don't plan to eat the produce that day. If that's the case, it's best to harvest and keep the produce in the fridge until you are ready to use it. If you keep vegetables on the plant for too long, they often get bitter or they start to lose their lovely flavour. And the saddest thing of all is leaving produce on the plant for too long. It goes over or becomes kind of inedible. And then it's a real waste of all your hard work and resources. So you must pick, pick, pick regularly. Also, the more you pick, the more you encourage the plant to produce more flowers, which in turn results in more fruit. In terms of when to pick, it depends what you're after. In general, veg that is picked on the smaller side are sweeter and more tender than if you leave them on the plant to get large where their skins can get bitter and they lose their flavour. This, for example, applies to aubergines, cucumbers and squash. When it comes to tomatoes, pick them just before you want to eat them, ideally on a sunny day so that they're still warm from the sun, gorgeous. And you know that they're ripe, where if you squeeze them slightly, there's a little bit of give, they're not rock hard. With chilies and peppers, you can pick them unripe when they're green or ripe when they're red. If you want hot, chilies then wait until they ripen to red or whatever their ripe colour is as that is when they'll be at their hottest. With beans the younger you pick them so as soon as they've reached the sort of size you're expecting the sweeter and tender they will be. If you leave them on the plants for too long they can get a bit woody and a bit stringy. And with peas you kind of just want to gauge when you think the peas in the pod are at their most swollen. It's a little bit of trial and error. One tip I have is really lift up the leaves to have a look at what veg is ready to harvest. Lots of the veg is green, of course, which actually makes it really quite difficult to spot in a mass of leaves. And any grower will tell you that they've completely missed a cucumber or completely missed a courgette, just didn't see it and then it turns into some huge marrow, which basically becomes a bit inedible. So do lift the leaves of every part of your plant to check for veg, and I'm sure you will find more than you initially spotted. When you harvest, I would suggest using a pair of secateurs because the stems of particularly aubergines, tomatoes, cucumbers, they get really tough and hard as the plant matures and it's impossible to cut it with scissors alone so you will need something strong like secateurs. Peas and beans are generally fine with some scissors. And when you do harvest the big fruit, always harvest with a little bit of the stem still on the fruit. And if you're harvesting tomatoes, you can of course harvest them individually or if the whole truss has ripened together, you can cut the whole truss and then you've got your tomatoes on the vine and that is it for this episode so the next few weeks are all about you observing your plants really start to shoot up now that the temperatures are rising watching them start to flower watching them start to set fruit harvesting your first fruit very exciting do please continue to send me your incredible pictures post them on social media and tag me in them and use the pot to pickle hashtag so that i can see and share them i can see some of you have already got the first of your tiny fruit which is absolutely incredible you guys have done so well it's blown my mind please keep sharing your progress with me the next episode i think will likely be around saving seed so how you go about saving the seed from the fruits from this year's veg plants in order to sow 
next season. Until then, happy gardening. I hope you are really enjoying the process and I will see you next time.